Today, we're going to walk through the basics of troubleshooting power issues on a Garmin Marine device. For basic troubleshooting, there are a few tools that can come in handy. One of the most important tools is a multimeter. A multimeter allows us to measure how much voltage we are receiving through a power connection. As a note, simple test lights are not sufficient for proper troubleshooting. In addition to a multimeter, it is useful to have extra properly rated fuses, an extra power cable, and oftentimes a different power source can be used to help isolate a device for better troubleshooting. Power problems can present themselves in numerous ways. You may have a device that simply powers down right after startup, or have a device that won't power on at all. On lower voltages, devices can have issues with the display showing graphical errors. To begin troubleshooting a power issue, the first thing we should check is that the power connections are still good and that the cables are fully connected. The power cable for our equipment will generally have a threaded collar. Make sure that this collar is fully tightened and that the cable is fully inserted into the unit. If you are confident that the cable is fully seated, the next thing to try is isolating the unit. Disconnect every cable except the power cable and try to power the unit on. If the device powers on after disconnecting an accessory, such as a transducer, it is possible that the battery does not have sufficient amperage to power both the device and the transducer. Charge the battery and try again. If the same issue occurs, we will need to troubleshoot the power to the unit. We will start by simply testing the battery or power source. Keep in mind that every boat and installation is different, and the equipment we are using may not match what you have on your boat. If you are uncomfortable performing any troubleshooting yourself, please contact a professional for assistance. For this test, we will need to set the multimeter up. Every multimeter will vary. Refer to the manual for specifics for that unit. We will want to test for DC voltage. The symbol for this is a V with a straight horizontal line with a dotted horizontal line below it. Now, take the red lead and connect it to the positive power connection. Then, take the black lead and connect it to the negative power connection. Don't worry about accidentally doing this backwards. It won't damage the equipment, but will show a negative voltage reading. Simply swap the leads around for a correct positive reading. The voltage on a fully charged resting battery should be around 12.4 or 12.5 volts. Do not run a voltage test with the motors running or with the battery actively being charged. This is not an accurate reading of the battery voltage. If the voltage is below 12.5 on a fully charged battery that has rested for 24 hours after a charge, then the battery is likely bad and needs to be replaced or reconditioned. If the battery voltage is showing 12.5 volts, then we may need to begin testing the cables of the Garmin device. We will start at the point closest to the affected device. On most devices, this will be the end of the power cable where it connects to the device. The sockets in the power cable to test will vary by power cable. Follow the on-screen link and then navigate to connection voltage. Then cable to find the specific diagram for your cable. Take the red lead and touch it to the positive voltage socket. Take the black lead and touch it to the negative voltage socket. If you test the voltage right where the power enters the device and it is showing that you have 12 volts or more, there may be an issue with the device. Contact Garmin Marine Support for further assistance. If you test voltage and you are showing less than 12 volts or no volts at all, there may be a problem with the fuse, power cable, or boat wiring. We will start with the fuse. To test a fuse, open the inline fuse holder. Make sure the fuse is still on the side of the holder that is connected to the power source. Take the red lead of the multimeter, which should still be on DC voltage, and connect it to the open side of the fuse. Connect the black lead of the multimeter to the same DC ground that the power cable is using. In our case, it is directly to the negative side of the power source. If the voltage is showing higher than 12 volts through the fuse, put the fuse holder back together, making sure that it is fully seated. If the voltage still reads less than 12 volts where the device receives its power, the problem may lie between the fuse and the device. This means that the power cable may need to be replaced. Contact Marine Product Support for further assistance. 
If you test the fuse and you are receiving less than 12 volts through the fuse, then we need to move closer to the power source and test for voltage. The next place that we will want to test for voltage is where the power cable is connected to the boat's electrical system. This will vary by boat, but often is connected at a terminal strip. If you perform a voltage check at the point where the power cable is connected to the boat's electrical system and you are receiving less than 12 volts, the problem lies in the electrical system. From this point, you would continue testing connection points in the electrical system for voltage leading back to the power source until you find where that voltage is showing 12.5 volts. Once you find that, you have narrowed down where the failure point is. If you are unable or uncomfortable performing this step, follow the on-screen link to find a dealer that can perform the troubleshooting. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit marinesupport.garmin.com.